Welcome to Vader TV, the network for innovators. I'm Bambi Francisco. Well, how do you get people talking about your company? Try word of mouth marketing. Joining me to talk about tips on how you can get customers to essentially market your company is Andy Cernowitz. Andy, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. So how do you get people talking about your company? Word of mouth used to be luck. You, know, you got some buzz, you launched a product, and people miraculously talked about it. Mm. And what we've learned is that there are certain things that encourage conversations. So word of mouth is old, but word of mouth marketing is new. Mm -hmm. And it comes down to these big ideas like making people happy, turning on customers, getting them to walk out of your store or leave your website and just say, I gotta tell somebody. Right, right. Yeah. And you know, that's something you can plan it and you can track it and it's just as important as any other kind of marketing. But when you nail that, you get customers for free through referrals because they love you. Right. Well, how do you how do you do that then? How do you? I mean, everybody wants to satisfy their customers, and everyone, I'm sure, has the goal of of um, trying to convince their customers to share share uh, share the company's story. Yeah. But it, the, the trick is how you, how do you do that? Yeah. So it's not about being a good company, because good companies are good, but they've got what we call the chocolate problem. Uh, the chocolate problem is that you've never picked up the phone, called a friend and said, have you tried chocolate? Because, you know, duh, you know, yeah. you know chocolate's good. Right. So it's being good, but it's also adding a reason to talk. Okay. So Krispy Kreme makes good donuts, but putting them in the window and saying hot now mm -hmm. was a reason to talk. Or Google Maps were cool. We all talked about Google Maps when they launched. Right. But after you told everybody Google Maps are cool, you never mentioned it again until Satellite View. Mm. And everyone looked at it, looked at the top of their own house, emailed a friend, said, don't look at the top of my house. Right. So you have to constantly iterate your product and so give it a different angle, a different perspective? It's got to be. I w yes, but I'd use, it's less complicated. There has to be something to talk about. Okay. So So this is part of your three reasons to get people to talk about you. Yeah, there's, there's, well, there's three things that are going to cause a person to make a recommendation. Okay, what are those? It's about you, me, and us. So the you reason says you're an awesome company, or you did something cool, or you're having a wacky promotion. So that's be good and give people these reasons to talk. Okay. But the me reason is bigger. The me reason says, I'm going to talk about you because it makes me feel good. Okay. So I like to feel smart. So give me inside information and tips and newsletters and blogs. So right. when my friends ask me, hey, what about the new website? I know everything to say. Okay. I want to feel important. You know, okay. Put me in a VIP program so I feel like a star. Call me an evangelist. Okay. Give me a hat. Okay. And then the us reason is I want to be part of a community. So when I'm not just a customer, but when I'm a member, when I'm part of your crew, when I'm part of the family, I tell folks, you know, hey, I'm a diehard member of this community, and we talk. Can you give us an example of sure. how you apply the three reasons to a company that maybe didn't apply those three reasons or, or three reasons how you get others to talk about the company? Yeah. There's a ton of great stories. If you look at the I want to feel important reason, yeah, you know right now exactly who you'd call for car advice. Mm -hmm. yeah, we all know those folks. You know who you'd call for restaurant advice. You know, these are the people who like to be asked. So if you look at QuickBooks, it's a really boring product. Mm -hmm. But they know that in every subset of their customers, there are these people who love to be the expert. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the QuickBooks community, it's not divided by invoicing and billing and checking. It's divided by plumbers and law firms and church office managers. Because when there's that one plumber who all of his plumber you know, friends in town say, hey, how do you do this and how do you solve that problem? Right. They make him look smart because he knows where to get these answers. So that's a good example of the smart, you know, the me reason. I want to look smart. And that was Intuit giving people a reason to use their products. Yeah. And it, it was interesting because a reason to use or a reason to buy is different than a reason to talk. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So talkers might not be customers. You know, talkers are people who like to make recommendations. Mm. So you think about um, Ferrari. Ferrari customers aren't telling everybody to buy a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. They want to be the only one. Okay. So yeah. Ferrari's talkers are 14-year-old boys and car junkies. Oh, I see. 
So talk. So this isn't about just getting customers. It's just about getting those people who talk. Yeah. Okay. And that's a whole different objective. So when you run advertising, most advertising is to drive a click or a sale. Right. That word of mouth marketing is driving a share. That I want to cause a conversation. So here's a classic example. Okay. So Potbelly Restaurant is a chain based out of Chicago, okay. fast food, just starting to go national. So when they opened up in Austin, they rented a mailing list, the traditional postal stuff, this isn't all online, of uh, people who had moved from Chicago to Austin. Mm -hmm. And they sent them a letter that said, do you miss us? Yeah, we're coming to town, we're opening up in Austin. Now everybody else would have put a coupon in there, just get a sandwich. Right, 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 right. The Potbelly coupon said, here's a coupon for 10 sandwiches. So what do you do with a coupon for 10 sandwiches? You have to walk around your office saying, hey, everybody, I get these 10 free sandwiches. I used to go to this place in Chicago. I love this restaurant. Oh, okay. The 10 makes it a reason to talk. I see. And you look connected. You're the one buying lunch. Right, it's right, fun. right. It's fun. It's a whole experience tied into walking around with this one coupon. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So give away more than just one item, freebie. Yeah. Think about what? the conversation. Yeah. yeah. What are the five steps to putting this word of mouth marketing plan together? So there's five, it's the five T's, and this works for any word of mouth. And so I, you can download a, a worksheet off my website that sort of lets you work through these. Okay. So the first T is talkers. Figure out who's going to talk about you. Okay. Then topics. What are they going to say? Okay. Third are the tools, and this is blogs and social media and mailings and coupons and all that stuff. Yeah. Fourth is taking part. How do you participate and engage in the conversation? How do you get them to participate? How do you participate? With them. Yes. Okay. And, and then them. fifth is uh, tracking. How do you measure the response? Now, when most people talk about word of mouth, uh -huh. they start with the third T. We've got a tool. Now, you need a Facebook page. You need a viral email. And if you start with the tools, you're missing the point because... The first question is talkers. Who's going to talk about you? Right. Find, identify them first. Yeah, you find them first. And so if your talkers are plumbers, your tool isn't a viral video or Facebook page. Your tool is a community for them. And if your talkers are customers of your restaurant, your tool might be a free sample for them to take home with them or take back to the office. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this whole viral industry is trying to sell us solutions. But... It really starts with who's going to tell a friend about you. Right. Then you come up with something great for okay. them to talk about that topic. Then you identify who they are. Yeah. And then what do you measure? The last thing was... Tra uh, yeah. The cool thing about word of mouth is tracking. Tracking. Because so much of these conversations are online now. Yeah. So you can track blog conversations. You can track forwards of an email. You can track YouTube views. That you know, We used to spend a lot of money to get customers to say what they really thought about us. Mm hmm and now you've got 70% of the online population posting reviews. Sure. People are blogging in their own words and saying what they think. Right. So the measuring and the tracking of word of mouth becomes this living, breathing focus group. Right. And never stops. Right, right. There's so much to track. There's so much to track. You don't know what to track. But tracking's good because, you know, research is, old school research is sloppy. You know, you, a focus group means you give people pizza and you hope they tell you something interesting. Well, could, could you track, what are the two things you would track? since there's so many different things to track. My two favorite things are, every morning, search the blogs for your product names. And track how many people are talking about you, what they're talking about, who's doing it. That's a good 10 minutes to get a genuine measure of your word of mouth. Second thing I would track is, how many people use your telefriend form on your website? Mm. That's a great stat, especially if you put a telefriend form on every page of your site. And that's what you need to do, right? Yeah. Invite well, like, a friend. Invite a friend. So you get more referrals when you do that, mm. and you get a really cool piece of data. Mm -hmm. So if you look at your web metrics, mm -hmm. the pages, the structure of the site says the front pages get clicked the most because they're on the home page. Right, right. And the deep pages rarely get clicked. Yeah. But if you look at forwards divided by page views, you realize, wow, this little obscure page is getting a ton of recommendations. Yeah. So this is a buzzworthy 
page. Page, that's good. Yeah. It's your good measure. Yeah, it's your measure of buzzworthiness. Forwards divided by the page views on that page. Yeah. That's smart. Okay, and then putting invite on all of your pages. I think that's Absolutely. key too. So Andy Cernowitz, thank you so much. Um, you have a book as well, mm -hmm. and it's called. It, this is it's all about the tips on word of mouth marketing. Yeah, it's right? called word it's of mouth called marketing. Word of mouth marketing. How appropriate. Yeah. Okay, thank you for sh stopping by and sharing. This was really good stuff. Great, thank you. I've been speaking with Andy Cernowitz. He's the author of Word of Mouth Marketing, and I'm Bambi Francisco.